Uh, moving on, guitars. Um, I've spent hours and hours and hours and weeks and months and years trying to get a good guitar sound, and and I'm still perfecting it. But um, as much as I love Easy Mix, it turns out that I the sound that I like the most was just throwing some EQ on, you know, cut some of the low end mud out, um, let the bass take all this stuff, this area right in here. Um, try to bring down the high end just a little bit, just, just so the vocals can cut through. Make a little dip right here also between 1.6 and 4 kilohertz because that's the, uh, the vocal's strongest area is right in here, right about that area. So if you can create a little dip such that you don't really notice that there's a dip there, the vocals will shine through even more there than you go for it. Um, like I said, bring down the top a little bit if you can, de depending on the EQ setting that you record your guitars at. Um, but here's a guitar track. This is not just the left speaker, but you know, just to give you an example. has a nice tight compressed sound um, all I did was throw that compressed the uh, that EQ on there and um, oh I keep getting sidetracked but anyways what I was saying about loving easy mix I I liked it I tried it came up with a good sound and then I was like you know what let's let's fiddle with something else so I did and I just fiddled with the uh, the built-in dynamics processor that's in GarageBand and I don't know why I never tried this all along but it's awesome. Check it out. Um, it's basically a compressor, and it's it's visual too. So you see where it's capturing it here. When it turns red, that that's sound that's not going up, that it's stopping. And if you, you're basically squashing it. So if you can add a little bit of squash with the dynamics compressor with some EQ, that's really, you know, just follow your ears. But I found that it, this is a sound that works for me. It's pretty basic, just some basic EQ um, and the dynamics processor. Going back to the EQ, by the way, there, there's always some hideous frequency that bleeds through the mix. When you record guitars, so that's why some of these knobs are a little like kaflui. But um, yeah, that's this is me just following my ears, and yeah, I I record my guitars exactly the same at this point, just because it it makes it simpler to record because it allows me to use the same presets, which is this is um, it reset it, but it's basically guitar one. You know, you click on guitar one, and this is going to come up. That's how I saved it. I always have some issues with this frequency at, at one kilohertz, so I just I bring it down a little bit. So, anyways, that's the guitars. I'll I'll show you what they all sound like together. show you something cool at the end one of my favorite parts is this outro section basically when the double double time part kicks in that's it just to show you how all this layering is, is pretty cool. I just want to show you it because I, I love this part. Um, with the compression on here, it really makes it sound kind of orchestral. I love it.
Now you'll notice the guitar sound is a little thin by itself, but really that's not a bad thing. If you can uh, make the guitars a little thinner, like if it's a song where the guitar is never going to get a rest, I mean where the whole band doesn't get a rest together, then um, it's a good opportunity to cut some low end out of the guitar because um, if it's not standing out by itself, um, you probably don't need those low frequencies there because the bass is going to fill it out and it's a good opportunity to just get rid of some uh, mixed mud uh, so anyways that's the guitars uh, EQ dynamics processor bam done I had a little fun with this uh, chugga chugga part basically it's a very brief clip that I have during two of the choruses yeah, you can see it is the first one, but um. Trigger, trigger, trigger. Let me show you what it sounds like with just that. This, you can hear there's a little bit more low end. Uh, you can see these frequencies are here where they were not on the other guitar tracks. That's because. You basically want to bring out that jigga, jigga, jigga part of the song, so you know, just leave it in there for that part. It's a cool little add some cool production value. Um, whenever you have a guitar solo, throw a little bit of delay, a little bit of reverb. Doesn't have to be anything special. Just a little bit of the built-in stuff in GarageBand. It usually does the trick. I mean, follow your ears, but it usually works for me. <laughs> Sounds pretty cool. Um, 